I'd like to introduce to all of you Mo Levy, an old friend of Hebrew University from Canada. He's executive director of the Asper Foundation. Mo sits on various boards, including the Board of Governors of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and devotes his time to various charitable causes. In 2014, he received the Scopus Award from the Canadian Friends of the Hebrew University. The Asper Center of Entrepreneurship at Jerusalem School of Business was established decades ago. And its spirit is at the heart of our featured lecture tonight from Hugh G. Innovate. Following the lecture, I would like to remind to everybody, we will have a question and answer session. You can raise your digital hand to ask your question, or you can write your question in the question and answer box. So Mo, please, the floor is yours. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me on, on your webinar today. I'm really pleased to be a part of this and to introduce your, your two distinguished uh, lecturers today. Uh, to begin with, uh, Amnon Dekel, who has been uh, part of UG Innovate since almost uh, its uh, new iteration and inception. Um, he has had uh, over 20 years of experience in product development, including starting up uh, three companies, uh, all in the areas of video sharing, personal networking, and indoor navigation. He's a recipient of numerous awards. And Amron, I was really impressed that you were nominated for a Pulitzer Prize by the New York Times. That, to me, is something that is probably pretty, pretty special. Uh, so on, we also have with us uh, Ayelet uh, Cohen, uh, who is uh, the deputy director of HU Innovate. Uh, she has uh, led the, sorry, she has been with the Jerusalem direct, uh, director of the Startup Nation Central and led a strategic project to develop the Jerusalem tech ecosystem. Uh, again, very impressive. Uh, I highlight that you've been involved with Google in a very significant way in the past. Uh, the educators group and the Google, Google Teachers uh, Academy. By the way, I want to connect with you later uh, because my son, who's an educator in uh, Toronto, at, uh, has an idea actually uh, for, for Google related to mm -hmm. education. So I'd like to pass that idea off of you, see what I'll you think. Uh, she's uh, also a social entrepreneur and has uh, created several, again, uh, uh, startups. So with that, Amnon and Ayala. Have a great Thank you very session. Much. And, and so unfortunately, I have to leave now. So have a, have a wonderful session today. Great. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mo. Appreciate okay. it. Bye. Thank you, Mo. Thank You're you. welcome. Bye. Uh, Francine, uh, could you get allow me to do a, sh a screen share? Yes, sure. Yeah. You should be. Uh, you you can do it, I think. No, not yet. You you need to disable it for me. Uh, or you might need to turn me into a co-host. I just oh, there did it. Goes. Great, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, uh, I hope everyone can see. Um, so I'm under the I'm working under the assumption that you can see the presentation. Uh, if someone could could give me an okay on that, uh, we can continue. Francine, is it okay? We can see. We can see perfectly. perfectly. Yeah, we can see. Great. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Uh, I, can th I think I'm speaking for both me and Ayelet when I say uh, we appreciate this opportunity to come and present to this uh, uh, to this very dis distinguished uh, crowd, uh, and we're very happy to be here. So I would actually like to start with a question. Um, what is the common characteristics of these companies? I think you probably know all or most of these companies. Some of them are older, some of them are younger, but they're all very, very famous. Um, you could use the chat if you'd like uh, window or the Q&A window in order to, uh, to, to tell us what you think. 
Do you see any kind of connecting characteristic between all of these companies? I'll wait for a few more seconds. One person started it. Uh, no, but uh, it's, a, it's a good try. Any other ideas? Entertainment? Uh, in, in, in partially, but uh, I'm not sure the Trader Joe would define themselves as entertainment or Microsoft, but I think that we see that re rely on public consumer items. Uh, in, in, in some ways, all U.S. companies, actually, that's a good one. I didn't think of that one, but I think that's actually correct. Um, so actually, the answer that we're looking for for the prize today is the following. All were started during a financial recession. So I think we all understand that we are in a one in a hundred year uh, type of recession or uh, even worse right now. Uh, there's a lot of hardship happening around us, but I, we really think it's important to understand and to remember that challenges should be and can be seen as opportunities. There's no question that there's a lot of uh, uh, suffering around us right now, and any one of us who has not been fired, who is not under financial difficulty right now should really be thankful for that. But I think this is also a time uh, where we could look at these challenges and ask ourselves what interesting opportunities abound here. And we'll get back to that a little bit later today. <clears throat> so today we're gonna to be talking about a little bit about Huji Innovate, uh, a little bit about our history and our, and our program for those of us that, that don't know it. And then we'll talk, uh, uh, then I'll hand over the mic to Ayelet who will talk about entrepreneuring in the age of COVID. And as Francine said, we will end uh, today's session with an open Q&A uh, for anyone who would like to participate. And let's start with a little bit of history. Huji Innovate, uh, as, as, as we all know, was started in 2018. But if we go back to 2001, the Asper Center for Entrepreneurship was founded by a very generous grant by the Asper Foundation. So I think the fact that Mo has opened uh, the session today uh, is, is very representative of this long-term and very warm and important relationship that, that Hebrew University has with Asper. Uh, in 2015, almost 15 years later, HU Start was founded by a partnership between the Jerusalem Business School uh, and within that the Asper Center for Entrepreneurship and between the Faculty of Natural Sciences and also with Yasum, our tech transfer organization. In 2018, me and Ayelet were brought on board and we were given one simple task <clears throat> as our first task, go and win the government tender uh, for the creation of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship a center in higher education. Uh, and luckily enough, uh, we were able to do that. Uh, we put together a wonderful team and a consortium, worked our butts off for two and a half months, and were able to win the first prize. And the first thing we did was create JLM Impact, which, is, which, we, which we launched with our partners at Betzalel and Azriel. And from there, we've been running uh, full speed ahead, as we like to say. A little bit about us. So I am the executive director. I have a PhD in computer science from, surprisingly enough, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. I also have a master's in professional studies from NYU in interactive telecommunications, a master's in psychology from Bar Ilan University. Uh, I have quite a few years of industry and academic management experience. My last academic management job before Huji uh, was uh, the chair of the Department of Software Engineering at Shinkar College of Art and Design. Uh, and I've been an entrepreneur, started up a number of companies, as Mo said earlier. I've been a startup mentor for uh, Microsoft Accelerator, uh, IBM AlphaZone, and others. I've been an air traffic controller and also a senior academic officer for the Israeli Air Force. And when I have time, I'm also a tech-based artist, kind of looking at the relationship between technology and humanity. Ayala, would you like to tell us about yourself, please? Um, yes, thank you. So I studied a completely different background and also much um, not that rich background. So I'm a social entrepreneur. Um, I studied Jewish history and uh, political science here at the Hebrew University. Um, and in the past 10 years, I was involved in developing the Jerusalem tech ecosystem. Um, 
and also developing actually ecosystem in general. I'm really passionate about a nexus point between innovation and entrepreneurship, technology, and um, education and community. So how we can actually bring everything together and create a greater good. So I think that actually brings up most of the things I was involved in in the past 10 years. Um, and I'm also a former pastry chef, a retired pastry chef, and it's always remember, uh, fun to remember this, and especially in the office, <laughs> I think they like it. Thank you very much, Ayla. And, and, and as you can see, we do have very different backgrounds, and actually we think that that is really important. Uh, I'm sure you would not be surprised that me and Ayla have a lot of arguments, uh, and many times she uh, gets me to change my mind and I think that's actually an excellent thing and a really important thing because this type of uh, diversity is, is something that I think makes us work much better together as a team. So Ayala is totally my partner in crime and I wouldn't be able to do it without her. So going on, we're also very proud to have Professor Shlomo Magdasi as the chairman of our steering committee and Professor Odet Shersayo as the chair of our teaching committee. Uh, for those of you who don't know them, they're all internationally recognized uh, uh, researchers in their fields, and they're also internationally recognized entrepreneurs. Together, they've started about 20 plus companies. So they are exactly the right type of people to be uh, leading us and helping us. We are, our wider steering committee, as you can see, includes people from all over the university, from all the different faculties, uh, and we see that as critically important for, the, for our capability of carrying out our mission. So I'm sure everyone here knows the Startup Nation. Um, we're all very proud of it. Uh, the book was excellent. Um, but uh, I don't know if you know, but we think that the Startup Nation is starting to slow down and maybe needs to get some oil uh, into the engine because it's starting to make some noises. Um, we think, and if you look at the data, <clears throat> that we are starting to reach a plateau. If you look at the news, uh, Times of Israel from three years ago, Israel sees a three-year decline in number of new startups. Uh, earlier this year, Israeli startups report steep decline in early stage investments. And also this year, this year Israeli tech industry grows, but employee shortages climbs to 18,500, almost 20,000 uh, people are missing in order to fill the needs of the Israeli industry. Uh, this is very, very problematic. So a few years ago, uh, Huji Executive Management took a deep look at this issue and came to a very simple conclusion. Innovation and entrepreneurship cannot be left to be kind of a chance byproduct of the fact that the university's mission, of course, is to be innovative and to create new knowledge. But Taking that knowledge and turning it into practical entrepreneurship is something that has to be turned into a strategy, it has to be something that is of deep importance to the university. And that is one of the reasons uh, that Huji Innovate has been pushed forward as it has over this last two years. Start here. Uh, <clears throat> so in 2018, Huji Innovate is launched and we start working. Uh, our vision is double. First of all, we see ourselves as serving as a platform to encourage and assist students, faculty, staff, and alumni at the university to develop their innovation and entrepreneurship mindset and skills. And second is that Huji Innovate will serve as a catalyst for venture creation processes to solve real world problems. And we'll get back to that in a second. We have a number of very basic and deep beliefs. And first of all is that innovation can be found within all disciplines. It's not just something that is relegated to kind of the STEM field uh, at the Safra campus in Givatram. It's something that exists everywhere and should be uh, understood and worked with. The second is that diversity in gender and culture is key to innovation and healthy teamwork. It is obvious to us that as we, as we create diverse teams and we get more diverse people into the room, we'll have more creative thinking, we'll have more critical thinking, and we will, at the end of the day, be able to solve bigger problems in a more creative way. And the third one is that we believe that the world of work is changing and an entrepreneurial mindset and the right set of skills are crucial to surviving the coming disruption. And when we say the coming disruption, we don't mean the COVID uh, pandemic. 
you know, that is a surprise to everyone uh, over this last uh, year. But even before that, I think it was clear to everyone that the world of automation, computing, and data are going to be ca causing major disruption in, in, in a wide set of, of, uh, of, uh, of things in the world of work. Therefore, we see this is extremely important. And when we look at the entrepreneurial mindset, we believe that every single student at the Hebrew University should understand this issue, so to understand that they should develop themselves as much as they can in this mindset. Uh, and we will be there with, uh, to help them with the university's help and with other partners in the university. Our first goal, when we look at our general goals, is to train innovative and entrepreneurial leaders. So here we rely on a very simple kind of mathematical formula. We believe that on the one hand, promoting an entrepreneurial mindset, while at the same time also teaching entrepreneurial skills, will help us create more innovative and entrepreneurial leaders. Now, some of those will become entrepreneurs, usually a small number, but they will become entrepreneurs and they will create new ventures to drive impact. Most of those will go work in the industry and that's totally fine, but we would like them to enter the industry and to be known as entrepreneurs, innovative leaders that are more desirable for the labor market. And we think that will be extremely important for these people in order to be able to survive the disruption. Our second goal is to grow the Huji's innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. And here we're talking about building bridges uh, in order to grow multidisciplinary collaboration within the university and between the university and the industry. Our third goal is to grow Jerusalem's innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. Here we're talking about breaking barriers between the Jerusalem academic institutions, government and industry and this, we believe, will enhance cross-pollination, creativity, and innovation. So if, if the university creates enough intrapreneurs and entrepreneurs, at the end of the day, the companies that are created by the entrepreneurs within the ecosystem are going to be able to work with the entrepreneurs that come out of the university in order to be able to grow. And if we go back to the 18,500 uh, people shortage in these areas, we hope that by doing this process, we will be seeing a, a smaller number of shortages. And our fourth goal is to create new ventures to solve real world problems. And here we think that we would like to be creating more spin-off companies that will come out of the university every year, but they will be companies that will be able to do what we call tikkun olam, or to make, make the world a better place, while at the same time generating financial profit. We don't see this as mutually exclusive, and we do this by focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030. So this is something, again, that we deeply believe in. If we look at our ecosystem, you see that our ecosystem is kind of, has four major wings to it, industry, academia, government, and NGOs, non-governmental organizations. We have relationships uh, in all of those areas, and we are developing the relationships in all of those areas. And just like any relationship, it's something you need to put effort into it. You need to continue developing it. And if you stop uh, putting the effort into it, then the relationships would go sour. And therefore, this is something we put a lot of effort into it as a strategy. We're very proud of JLM Impact, the Jerusalem Consortium that we, told, uh, that we spoke about earlier that won the 20 million shekel prize. And here you can see the proud parents of JLM Impact. So you can see Yishai from uh, uh, our general manager and uh, vice president, of course, me and Ayele. You can see Tzvi Wiener, the dean of the, uh, the Jerusalem Business School. And you can see uh, um, uh, representatives from uh, the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design and from the Azraeli College. So how do we do all this? You know, we've put quite a lot of things uh, uh, in our goal list. Uh, so we've created an activity model that uh, we like to look at as like a flower that you can see here. And we have kind of four major areas of operation, inspire, learn, experience, and build. And notice that around all of that, we have what we call the Huji Innovate Hub, which is a physical and mental space where everything uh, um, magnet, uh, um, rotates around. So let's start with inspire. With inspire, uh, we want to develop entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial ecosystem, culture, and community uh, uh, at Huji. So we're talking about high-profile events, entrepreneurship clubs, ambassadors programs, a digital community, conferences, 
and an innovation festival that we run once a, week, a year. In the area of learn, we're there to educate innovative and entrepreneurial leaders. So we develop digital courses and practical practicum-based courses and extracurricular entrepreneurship workshops and international summer programs and boot camps and, and, and entrepreneurship courses for the community. In the experience area, here we're talking about enabling uh, uh, participants to practice innovation and entrepreneurial skills. It's one thing to learn about them, but it's a different thing to practice them. So here we're talking about a hackathon, a boot camp, ideation workshop series that we'll be running uh, in, uh, in, in all campuses and in all faculties, uh, a creativity challenge we've already been running for two years, and a joint experience program with the Jerusalem Business School. And, and in the build area, we have what we call the open venture creation programs. Here, uh, we're running the open ag food program, the open health program, and the open X program, which focuses around technology and science-based entrepreneurship. And the focus here is on creating new ventures to solve real world problems. And in about one month's time or, or three weeks time, we'll be finishing the second cohort of this series uh, after the first one was in July of 2019. So we touch about 3000 participants a year. Now we've been doing this now in, in our second year. So we're starting to see uh, uh, the data uh, and we're very proud of this. Uh, and I'm just going to show you a few images from some of our operations uh, around, around the last uh, year and a half, so, so you get kind of a, a taste. Visitors from abroad, of course. Uh, this is in our first cohort and uh, uh, open day at the end of last year in July. You can see Yishai, you can see uh, Asher, uh, you can see Flor from, uh, from the Jerusalem municipality. Uh, this is the first cohort teams. And Kinoko was one of the companies that came out of there. Uh, this, this was a three-person uh, team uh, that came together in, in our open ag program in, in Rehovot. And I love what they say, Hujime Innovate was precisely the push we needed to realize our idea and bring it to fruition. And we're very proud to say that uh, these days they're, uh, they, they're in the process of signing on with uh, uh, JVP, the venture uh, the venture. Um, uh, the venture organization in Jerusalem uh, for their initial investment to run forward. So now I'm going to hand over the mic to Ayelet to talk about entrepreneuring in the age of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you allow me to share my screen now? Okay. So I guess you all stay with me. I just need yeah, we can see your screen now on PowerPoint if you want to make it. Okay, so. one point my computer, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. Great, so thank you, Amnon. And as we started, we see we are looking at this era and uh, we looked at those companies who started all in the time of financial recession and we realized, and I think it's one of the essential of being an entrepreneur and the entrepreneurial mindset is to see challenges as opportunities. And this is what we wanted to, we want to invite you to do, but we also took the last three months first to do it ourselves as a team and also to invite our students to look at the new reality that we are all caught in and realize that it also represents enormous opportunities. So um, I want to take you back to February 2020 and um, where this was our situation, it's not our team, it's actually another picture from, another, from the open final event last year, but we were happy and settled. We knew that we are going to open this spring semester, that our work plan is completely worked. We knew what we're going to do, how we are going to do it. And um, we felt really confident. Um, and then, COVID-19 hit Israel just one week before the beginning of the semester. And that was our situation. Running over and like, what do we do? We had the perfect work plan, this is what we thought. And then we just finished to do fine tuning after the insights from the first semester. And we're caught in this crazy situation like all of us. And it took us some time actually to remember what we always preach and to try to walk 
this talk and to understand challenges as an opportunities. And I'm going to share with you what we did, how we actually understood it, and how we encourage our students to try and innovate and use this challenge as opportunity. Um, so this is what we're going to do. And first, um, I want to ask, start also with a question. What do you think, um, this is Lionel Messi, for those who don't know, um, I think the best football or soccer player in the world. And I want to ask you, what do you think is Messi goal? If you can just write it on the chat. Ah, sorry. Not good, apparently, this sharing my screen while watching your comments. So I'll wait a bit for answers via the chat, but what do you think Messi, Lionel Messi goal is? Okay, so we have goals <laughs> to win the game. Okay, so I see some more answers. Um, last year, we hosted um, the VP, Le Le VP Leadership at Google um, at the university to give a talk, and he asked us the same question. And everybody in the audience, maybe because we are Israeli and love soccer, we, uh, we said, okay, Messi's goal is to score goals. This is what he do. And this is why he, what he get paid for. And he said to us, Fred Kaufman is the VP leadership. And he said, no, Messi's goal is actually to bring his team to the championship, to make them a champion. And usually we understand what we do as our goal. And that what happened to us initially. We had our perfect work plan and we were so stress is now we need to cancel it. And then it's actually the Corona, the COVID-19 situation helped us to understand that it's a new opportunity to think how we can reach our goals, how we can reach the goals that Amnon told you before to educate, to train entrepreneurial leaders and also to support um, new uh, ventures, how we can use this kind of situation to, uh, to meet these goals. What we can do, it was a stretch. It wasn't easy initially. But I think we created during these past three months really interesting and creative ideas. Some of them were complete fail. Sorry to say it out loud here with so many people who is interested, but we failed several times. But other kind of line of activities were tremendous success and realized what is working and what is not and what we want to follow. And I think this actually the past three months are going to impact and change some of our core activities because we learned a lot. So the first thing was to focus on the goal and understand what we want to achieve, uh, what we want to achieve, what is our goals, and how we can meet them in other ways. To remember that goals, that soccer, or all those things are just instrument to get um, the impact that we want in the world. Hmm. Okay. So the second thing um, we learned and we did was to address the elephant in the Zoom. Um, we realized that we can continue as planned and we need to create new activities that will be related to the new situation and answer the new needs that arise during this time. So we first put really quick after the, quick after the pandemic hit Israel, we decided um, we put out this um, RFP, request for proposal, to support venture, to support social venture that created a solution for the challenges that happened here in Israel. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we got amazing ideas and projects from our students and professors in the university, alumni, that created initiatives to support the people um, in this time of need. We were focused mainly on the social distancing, distancing situation, um, and, got, and I want to share with you just one idea that we supported. Um, Stavtek or Grammatek um, in English. Savta is also grammar in Hebrew. And that's a group, a student, um, it's a student who decided to create um, online smartphone lessons and classes to um, senior citizens to help them to communicate and stay connected with their friends and family during the social distancing and quarantine. And actually the reaction was overwhelming. And when we talked with him initially and started to support him, both with guidance and money, he thought it was going to work with several hundred um, people. He, ended up this two-month 
um, with 1,700 senior citizens took uh, part in their digital training and they actually build a community. And I think one of the most touching moments that I had in this past three months was during the, 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 silent, the Memorial Day of uh, the Holocaust Memorial Day in Israel, where they invited everyone to log into a Zoom, to join one Zoom and send everyone together. So all of those Holocaust survivors that participated in their community won't be alone during this time. So that was an amazing experience. And um, you can see here an article from the BBC about this project that was actually really interesting for many people in the world and learn and try to translate this kind of activity to other places. The second thing we did in order to address the elephant in the Zoom was to create the morning after um, challenge. So we were planning to host a hackathon on the, um, on the beginning of June and we realized it's not gonna happen to have this huge hackathon and we created the morning after challenge together with our partner in Jalan Impact. Um, and we invited students um, from all over Israel, not only from Jerusalem and the Hebrew University, to create solutions to and redefine and redesign the space where we live in um, for the morning after the corona, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and how we can handle with uh, our new routine, our new life. And we invited, we were focused on the mental space, the personal space, home, how our home is going to be designed, professional space, both focused on work and, um, and learning and education spaces, um, public space, and also the wild space, um, which was surprised us with crazy ideas. And uh, we didn't, we were hoping to get a good reaction to this, but we were overwhelmed with 92 um, teams participated, represent 240 participants from 10 academic institutions here in Israel. And we had 15 um, partners, both from the government and from the industry. And it was a huge success. We had hundreds of people logging in to see the final. And um, I just want to share with you the first prize um, cover, which created um, antiviral anti fabric that can be used in public transportation. It was created by a chemist from Hebrew University together with textile designer from Betalel. And I think this kind of combination and this joint work actually proved what Amnon said earlier about the cross-pollination and how we see multidisciplinary support more innovation. Um, you can see here a demo where they, they, they created about um, how they can integrate their new fabric into um, airplanes and we hope all that will actually increase public health pretty soon. So now we are helping them to develop this idea into a venture um, and they already had a prototype and they got an article after there was an article in Ynet, it's the largest Israeli um, online uh, news website about this project and about the team that won um, because they were really excited about it. And the um, third point was to scale up the community. When we went online, when we realized the, the, the COVID-19, we are going to work only online, we started to create a community. We invited students to join and meet peers, like-minded peers, like-minded students that can also be interested in innovation and entrepreneurship. Oh, sorry. Um, and we created a lot of activities also for our mentors. We have a weekly webinar. We had a lot of um, posts uh, from mentors giving advice during the time of the COVID-19. And it actually was amazing to see the students' reaction. We grew, I think, in 400%. We cannot track this anymore. There's so many discussions and ideas uh, switch in this group. And the students, actually, students reach out to us and said that thanks to us for giving them meaningful place during this time and supporting them. So connecting with the community, allowing them actually to have a peer-to-peer -peer discussion was really important thing we did. And we are gaining a lot because students, after creating this community, we see students starting to lead more initiatives that support our goals, creating more innovation and entrepreneurship at the university. So I think I've almost run out of time. Um, so that's the last point, uh, but it's business as usual. So changing everything is important and creating all of those new activities was really important, but we decided to actually keep going with open programs that I've not mentioned before um, and see how we can help them, the students, the participants in open, 
to create um, the best startups during this time, dur during this crazy time where we cannot actually meet and gather in one room and manage these programs um, remotely. We had um, usually the program, the, the benefits that we give is this hands-on workshop and lectures, expert and mentors, um, expert mentors that help them connection to the ecosystem and the tech industry and also co-working space where they can work. So they didn't get a co-working space, but one of the things we realized that also making this digital program with all of the adjustment was really successful in the eye of the participants. Um, you can see here a quote from Muli Gelman, one of the participants, that they actually kind of slightly changed their project during this program because they realized the opportunity in this move to remote work and they create a, a platform to help companies grow more employees and mentoring, internal mentoring program to, um, that will help them to become more learning organization. And that's something that they realized, I think, during the time of COVID-19, because what we saw in all of those companies in the beginning, they knew how to combine this new technology together with the new need um, that usually during the time of recession and crisis, we, we, we understand better what is actually essential to us and what we really want. Um, and I think this is something we see in all of our programs. We see a lot of focus on telemedicine and how we can give things from remote, how we can help people in different uh, places, how we can make our world more sustainable. Um, and this is some, many of the things. So to sum up, this is how we see how you turn challenge to opportunity. First, you need to understand your goal and be focused on the goal and not on the way and the instrument that will bring you there. The instrument will change, but the goal needs to remain the same. The second thing is to actually address the obstacles and the challenges that you are going to face. It's not going to be easy. It's not a linear route, but it's a lot of, it's a curve and never, it's never, you don't know the road in, a, in advance but you need to address the obstacles and actually solve them and not just avoid most of them because otherwise you probably won't meet your goal. Um, scale up the community, bring up the, bring the people that you wanna work with, bring your customers and understand their needs and try to answer it, work with them together in order to solve the challenge or in order to actually bring this opportunity to life. And third is to understand when you just wanna keep go and not it may take all of those detours and actually work um, on this direction and know where to continue. So I think that was our experience um, in turning this COVID-19 challenge into opportunity and how we help students in our space to do the same and understand this challenge as an opportunity and try to solve those problems that they dealt with. And I guess that's the question we want to ask you. Where do you see challenges today and how you can turn them into opportunities? So, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ayelet. And um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I remind everybody that uh, if you want to speak, just raise your digital hand so I can open your microphone to answer Ayelet's question or to question your questions. You can also write your questions on the question and answer box or the chat. So I see we've received some. Uh, uh, somebody says we've uh, we're we've used too many buzzwords, so we, we apologize about that. Uh, if there's any specific type of question you'd like to ask, we'll be happy to uh, explain things. Okay, we have um, from Susan Ponsot, a friend from the United States, a question, will the results of the competition be public? Yes, so the results are already public and now we're working, they actually send most of the companies and the team send their materials in Hebrew and now we're working with them to translate it into English so we can actually spread it um, in a wider audience. So I hope we'll have it on our English website in uh, the next few weeks. And also we have another question. What are the most successful companies to come out of the program? 
So we remind you that the program is very young. Um, so we do have a, um, a number of companies that are out in the world uh, and operating in the world. Kinoko is one of them that I, that I presented earlier. So if you're looking at it from the point of view of raising uh, investment, they might be considered the most successful ones. Um, uh, but when we look at it from other impact standards, uh, we have uh, uh, one company that, that was created by students from, uh, in computer science that, tried to, that looked at the statistics of students studying computer science at the Hebrew University, and they came to the conclusion that 90% of all students studying computer science at the Hebrew University come from families where their parents have an academic uh, education. So they decided that they want to try to deal with that problem. They created a program uh, that uh, fits and connects students that are studying computer science with high school students uh, that are considering and would maybe like to study computer science. And they're actually creating a situation where they're mentoring those students and helping them uh, develop their capabilities. And that. Would you like to say something more about that, Ayala? Um, I think you covered it. I just want to we're not allowed to say, but we can say that some of our um, participants in this current cohort were really interested in offering in the past few days. And we see, we believe that we'll have more um, news to share with you in the past, in the next few months. Okay. And uh, also, um, there is a question if are you in need for grants donation to QG? So we're in the process of developing a uh, strategy for um, sustainable, sustainability for the organization. Uh, right now, we do have uh, funding from the uh, Israeli government for four years of operation, but we are already planning on how to deal with uh, uh, our sustainability afterwards. Uh, and we are in, we're planning a number of different um, uh, exciting types of things. For example, uh, we're in the process of developing a student fund uh, we would like to create a, a student, a fund that is managed by students for students, uh, that trains students in how to manage the fund and also trains them how to become analysts, how to find interesting and good, uh, uh, good ideas and companies out there, make and then do the due diligence on them, and then go through the process of funding them. Uh, uh, so we're now in the process of actually raising funds around that with a number of, uh, uh, of donators. So if anyone is interested in that, that is something that we are very interested in. Uh, and anything that, that can help us bring more impact to what we're doing is something that is always uh, interesting and important for us. Thank you. Um, David Rottenberg, he's asking, are there equivalent organizations in other countries and do you work with them? Would you like to answer yeah. that, Ayala? Yeah. So we are um, actually there are several organizations in many universities. We are part of the GCEC, which is the Global Consortium of Entrepreneurship Centers in Higher Education uh, Institutions. And last year, in last October, we won we announced one of the five um, up and coming, most emerging, um, most promising and emer emerging new innovation center. Um, so that was a really exciting moment. We are also working with uh, EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and collaborating with other universities and organizations through them. And we created, actually, we have the International Summer um, Program. We run usually, every, we run every year at Fuji. Um, unfortunately, this year, because of uh, due to COVID-19, it's not possible. And we usually have collaboration around it. Two other programs that we were partner is a Big Ideas Competition at Berkeley University, at University of California, Berkeley, and um, Falling Wall in uh, Berlin. Falling Wall, um, it's a global competition in uh, 100 locations every year. And um, we have PhD students who translate their research into um, <clears throat> into a venture, we um, led the Israeli lab and um, sent um, the winner to compete in Berlin and uh, in collaboration with them. And we are always actually open to more and create more collaboration with other universities. We are in discussion with several others. And if you are affiliated with any other university or entrepreneurship organization across the world, we will be happy 
to collaborate with. Um, we're really open and always willing to do so. Amnon, do you want to add anything? I forgot. Uh, yeah, um, we, we've, I'm just adding to that that, uh, for example, uh, an organization in Korea called the uh, Korea, um, they're called KIS at the Korea Institute of Startup uh, uh, and Entrepreneurship Development has reached out to us. They've flown us to there. Uh, they, were, they were about to send 10 of their students uh, from Korea to Israel this summer. Of course, that's been canceled, uh, but they do want us to, uh, to do a boot camp for them. Uh, there are a number of European universities that, are, that have asked us also to run a boot camp for them. So um, we see a lot of interest and we're now in the process of also creating the strategy for who do we want to work with, where do we want to work with them. Today we had a, a, a conversation with, uh, uh, with some representatives in Japan who are also interested. So there's a lot of interest uh, and, and we obviously are interested because if there's one thing we know, it is that we do not know everything. And there's always something to learn from others and to do knowledge sharing. So that is very important for us. Oh, well, thank you, Amnon. And uh, we have time for one more last question from Sheldon Singer. Uh, what is the thrust of social innovation at Hebrew University? What is the thrust of social innovation at Hebrew University? Well, I don't think I can answer for Hebrew University. Because Hebrew University is a very large organization and there are multiple uh, uh, people dealing with uh, uh, social innovation in multiple ways. If it's from the research angle, if it's from the educational angle, uh, we've been asked to cooperate with them and we have cooperated with a number of, of, of groups at the Hebrew University. Uh, and we're always happy to do that, but I'm also sure that there's a lot happening that we don't even know about. So I think we can talk about what our uh, um, angle is on social innovation. And I'll say what I think, and Ayelet can add to that later, but from where I come from, I think social innovation is just as important, if not maybe even more important than, uh, uh, than tech-based innovation. Uh, in many ways, there should not be a difference between them. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between how, how social organizations get developed, how they need to, uh, how they need to, to grow, uh, and of course, there are differences in what the, what the types of problems they're trying to solve. But we, from my point of view, I think that even any technology-based organization should a not ignore the effects of what they're doing uh, on society, and b if what they do can also help make the world a better place. I think it's also important to do that. I get it. Um, so maybe I'll add something from a personal angle because I was a student and moved to Jerusalem 10 years ago and I think I was amazed in Haifa, I grew up in Haifa and I was amazed, from, I was really curious about Jerusalem and I was also, I saw Jerusalem is kind of a microcosmos of Israel and I think, um, I think it was Kermit Flug who said that if you want to understand how Israel look, will look in 10 years from today, you need to look at Jerusalem today. And Jerusalem is kind of a future mural of Israel. And when you live in Jerusalem and come as a student coming from outside of the city, you actually see all the challenges and the difficulties. And I think for me and for many of my friends, it was kind of a call um, to say, how can we get involved, how can we improve this place? We knew that Jerusalem is important and is valued to all of us. And staying in a city, living in it, seeing all of the challenges was kind of a, a waking call. Um, how can we be involved? How can we create new ventures that will change this place? Back in 2012, there were about 200 tech companies in Jerusalem. Um, today, we have about 400 tech companies. The Jerusalem tech ecosystem was started by a group of students with a huge vision. We didn't understand nothing about economy we were doing. We started the first entrepreneurship center. We started the community, the first accelerator. We were really excited about it. And I think when you look at the world, there is some really interesting research uh, case about it. The describing how Jerusalem was started by the Jerusalem tech ecosystem was started by young people with a vision. Um, and this created a change in the city. This 
changed, actually created thousands of new jobs in collaboration with the government, with the local municipality. And that was something that we saw and wanted to change. And I see so many, we see so many students with the same kind of urgent, where they come to the city, they see the challenges and ask, how can we be involved? How we can change? How we can make this better place? Because if we will solve Jerusalem problem, probably we'll be able to solve more of Israel problem and hopefully to scale up to the world. This is how the tech company is working and we hope it will be same for social ventures and ideas. Okay, thank you very much, Ayelet, and uh, thank you, Amnon. Um, our time is over. Uh, thank you to all of you for joining our webinar. But tomorrow I will send to everybody the recording of uh, this webinar so you can hear it again and uh, hope to see all of you in the next webinar next uh, week. Uh, Francine, uh, Francine, can you hear me Francine? Uh, I see that there's some questions that we did not answer so uh, if you I'm happy if you give the our emails uh, to uh, any of the participants and they should feel free to send us uh, and we can answer some of these questions. Uh, sure, my mail, is in, my mail is in the invitation of the webinar, so you are more than welcome that, to write to me and I will forward to Amnon or Ayelet the, the question. Thank you to everybody Thank and you. have a good day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the globe. <laughs>